when generally when you think about the term intelligence, you're talking about what's the difference between Einstein and a normal person, or between a normal person and a stupid person. But actually, um, it's like what's the difference between a normal person and a mouse, and what's the difference between a mouse and a rock? Like that's the that's the difference in. Uh, between just levels of intelligence within humans, which actually doesn't vary that much in the grand scheme of things, versus just what intelligence is in general. One way of thinking about what intelligence is, is as an optimization process. The most basic of all optimization processes is evolution, which um, is looking for good replicators in the search space of animals right, or creatures, organisms, organisms is the word. Um, and so it does this by um, picking a point in the search space, a specific animal, right, and then um, there are slight mutations when the thing reproduces. So it's moved slightly in the search space, right? Every time it reproduces, there's a slight shift because the children are not exactly the same as the parents. And the way that it evaluates the uh, fitness function over the whole search space is how many surviving children that animal goes on to have. That's what it's optimizing for, right? Um, so it's very slow because it, it, its movements through the search space are random and then it just is slightly more likely to keep movements that are, that are sort of upward. So one way of imagining it, if you've got a two-dimensional search space, uh, suppose we have an animal that can actually only vary in two ways, an extremely simple type of animal. At every point in this search space, there will be a fitness level, right? which is this kind of abstract concept of how good that organism is at reproducing. On average, an organism that has these attributes is going to have how many surviving children, right? So. Now we've kind of got something three-dimensional. You can think of it as like a, a three-dimensional surface, right? Like it's got, you know, it's like some kind of a mountain where there's various hills and bumps. This da, 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 comes down to here, which is this and that, and that's the top of that mountain. It's what's called a hill climbing algorithm. And this is why I'm laying it out in this particular way, because it climbs a hill. It's like a blind person, and they try just stepping in one direction at random and saying, right, am I higher than I was? And if they're higher than they were, then they stay there. And if not, they step back and then just try stepping randomly again. And so very gradually, they will climb up the mountain. There is one problem with that, which I can show on, this, uh, on the paper here, which is that if you are a basic hill climbing algorithm like evolution, you can climb yourself up, 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 you know, wandering around randomly, you eventually get up to here. And once you get here, you're actually stuck because it goes down before it goes up. Even if there's a huge mountain over there, you can't see the huge mountain, you only see immediately what's underneath you. If you have to get less fit before you get more fit, evolution doesn't plan, right? So it can't see that there's this huge hill off in the distance. So it gets stuck in what's called a local maximum or a local minimum which is a sort of a trap, and this happens to evolution fairly often. So that's an optimization process. Optimization processes are about finding high points on the fitness landscape. And if this were more than two dimensions, if this were, you know, 100,000 dimensions, uh, the more dimensions you have, the harder it is, right? Because you've got more things to change and uh, the whole thing just becomes much more complex and optimizing it with more dimensions is, is, is harder. And this is a big problem in machine learning in general, that you end up with, with way too many dimensions and you need to figure out ways of just picking the dimensions that matter the most or distilling them down. Dimensionality reduction is called, it's a whole thing in itself. So are we saying the mountains are just a, how successful each point on that graph is? Yes, exactly. So it is a third dimension, but it's not a dimension of the configuration space because each dimension is something that you can change in terms of the design of the organism or whatever. Evolution doesn't have a direct, there's no single how many children do you have gene, right? It's an emergent property of everything else, the environment, the way that the, the animal ends up formed from all these different genes. The mountain range is, is just a, a way of visualizing it. You could also look at it like a heat map, just draw it on two dimensions and shade it so that there's like a red area around with there's an orange area and a yellow area and so on, and you're trying to sort of head towards the, the brightest area, something like that. Um, just different ways of representing the same idea. One way of, uh, of characterizing what an intelligent system is, is that it's good at optimizing. 
it has, uh, so evolution is, is not particularly good at optimizing for good replicators, but it, you give it long enough and it does a pretty good job. Um, but, so evolution is optimizing for replication, but you can, you can draw this type of mountain range or this heat map or whatever for anything that's interesting. And an optimization algorithm is trying to find the high points in that space. Even if you're still only looking at your local area, you can say, well, I took a step in this direction and I went up. So next time, rather than stepping completely randomly, I'm gonna step in the same direction again. Maybe even I'm gonna step a little bit further this time because I'm assuming that this is a good direction to head in. And if I start heading down again, then I'll start looking randomly again, something like that. There's always a certain cost of doing an experiment, as it were. Um, evolution does all of its experiments in the real world, right? It, it can't think. Whereas if I'm designing a car or something, I can say, right, what would happen if I made it six inches longer? I can say, well, there'd be a bit more room for this, but there'd be less room for that. I'm thinking about it in my head. I don't need to build the car. And a bunch of choices that evolution would make in its random meanderings don't even occur to a human. You know, oh, what would happen if, you know, we just broke off one of the wing mirrors? Well, you know, <laughs> that immediately seems stupid. And that's the kind of thing that evolution might try a few million times before it tries something else. And that's one of the key differences. A more powerful intelligence is able to hit a smaller space in a, lar uh, a smaller target in a larger search space in less time, which is why a car designer is so much more intelligent than evolution, because a car designer can make a change, can make an improvement uh, in an afternoon, which evolution couldn't make in 100,000 years. We'd like to thank Audible.com for sponsoring this computer file video. They've got masses of books online to choose from, so if you want the chance to try one out for free, go to audible.com slash computerfile. Now today I'd like to recommend a book called What If, uh, which is by the creative XKCD comics Randall Munro. It's also narrated by Will Wheaton. I'm sure you'll know XKCD. It asks some of the questions that have been posed to the XKCD cartoonists over the years. So get over there, audible.com slash computerfile. Try out What If, and uh, thanks again to them for sponsoring this film.